from the students of Airwaves Media. Bringing you news in and around Alma High School. You're watching The Airdell. Welcome to the Airedale. I'm Michael Farrell. And I'm Ben Mitchell. And today we'll be talking about the new mayor, Science Fair, History Day, AP Preparation, plus much, much more coming up on the, the Airedale. Airedale. Here in Alma, we have recently elected our new mayor, but what are his plans for his term in office? Stetson Goodson talked to Mayor-elect Jim Fincher to find out the details. Last November, the people of Alma elected the new mayor, Jim Fincher. But what plans does he have for the future of Alma? First, for all the employees to feel needed and wanted, and I'm going to encourage them and they'll become more efficient. Mayor Fincher also has larger goals. Broadly, uh, landscaped goals, I guess, would be we need more rooftops in Alma, that we need more people. We have currently about three projects we're working on that could very easily uh, in the next couple of years create 200 new homes. There are many challenges with doing new things, but what are the challenges with being the new mayor? Just getting everybody to work together. Everybody wants the same thing. We're all on the same team. We have different ideas and we may disagree on city council or any committee or whatever, but as long as we all do what we say we want to do and let's make Alma a better place to live, then we'll get together and we'll work through our differences and uh, make Alma a better place to live. This has been Stetson Goodson from Airways Media reporting on Alma's new mayor. Here at Alma, we have a great library to lend out books to the community, but not everyone knows what the library is all about. So Dane Barker and Levi Stringfellow took a look into the library. Many students don't have access to printers or Wi-Fi at home. That's why Alma Public Library provides both of these services for free. We interviewed an Alma Public Library librarian about the things that they provide. Uh, what would your life be like if you didn't have Wi-Fi, if you couldn't easily make a copy, if you didn't know how to fill out an application? You know, things like that uh, seem easy to a lot of people. They're not easy to everyone. And just some of those basic, what we consider basic skills, are not skills that are taught to everyone. And not having those can make your life so much harder. We asked what kind of help our public library provides. A lot of people think that the library is just about books, when the truth is the books are only about 20% of what we do for the community. Um, some of our main services that get utilized are faxing, copying, printing services, our internet, our free Wi-Fi. One big part of helping the community is by donating. Here's some of the ways you can donate. The library likes to have books. Um, the Crawford County Volunteers for Literacy, they accept book donations as well as the Crawford County Adult Education Center. They actually have a small lending library on the second floor of their building and uh, it's connected to the district court building. So uh, that's a really good place to always contact because they have students who have children and they have students who are in need of food. So that would probably be a really great resource for donations for all three. This has been Dane and Levi with Airwaves Media. Here at Alma, we offer many AP classes. They offer a rigorous educational experience and allow for extra credit if you do well in these courses. But what are they all about? Caden Daspit and Braden Peppas took a look into preparing for these AP classes. AP classes, or advanced placement, are classes that are offered through Alma High School. These classes allow students to gain AP credits. Having four AP credits puts students one step closer to a high honors degree. Now how difficult are these classes? First, we asked someone that is in AP Psychology for the answers. Um, I feel like I have a lot more work this year, like wise, like homework and like stuff that I need to accomplish on my own and I can't get done in class. We know that every class is different, so we got further opinions. Here is a student enrolled in AP U.S. History. You are expected to learn these subjects very well, and you're also... Want, uh, there's also a need for you to form your own opinions on the topics that we're discussing. Finally, we asked the teacher how different they are from the normal classes. 
Um, AP classes are weighted on a five-point scale. Um, honors are on a four-point-five scale, and regular classes are just a four-point scale. These classes seem to be pretty useful and challenging for those willing to take them. This has been Caden Daspit and Breda Peppis with Airways Media. The winter formal happened recently here at AHS. It sure looked like a lot of fun, but what all went on? Lewis Alexander is here with a recap of what happened at the winter formal. Talking to friends about dresses and suits are one part. The next is on the dance floor with your partner. This is something to remember for a while. This is the dance recap. Oh, nice been going pretty good so far. Got to meet all my friends. We're chilling. Here is another opinion from Kat. Our shape is really good. Oh, I got to meet a lot of new faces. And the whole experience is really great since last year. It, I had a bad experience last year, but this is really good last year, so I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. This has been Lewis Alexander with Airwaves Media. The ISEF Science Fair is going on nationwide, and we had our local science fair here at Alma with many competitors moving on to state and national level competitions. But what is this all about? Alma High School has an annual tradition of having a science fair. The science fair has 17 different categories that you can make a project about. All of our winners from all of the categories at a science fair will qualify to go to regional competition at the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville in March. So we have 17 different categories. And so uh, the first, second, and third place uh, winners in each of those categories will move on to that competition. If they place there, they can move on to state competition. And there's also uh, opportunities to uh, move on to international level competition. So this is just the first step uh, in going through that progression. The multiple science fair categories include animal sciences, behavior and social sciences, biochemistry, biomedical and health sciences, biomedical engineering, cellular and molecular biology, chemistry, computational biology and bioinformatics, earth and environmental sciences, embedded systems, energy, sustainable materials and design, engineering technology, statics and dynamics, environmental engineering, material science, mathematics, microbiology, physics and astronomy, plant sciences, robotics and intelligent machines, system software, translational medical sciences. A lot of the projects that you see um, that deal with climate, that deal with agriculture, uh, that deal with uh, alternative fuel sources, I think a lot of those types of projects are sort of important today with, with what a lot of the scientific community is, is addressing. Um, but we have several projects in uh, a lot of different categories that just fit different, they sort of fit just a different niche. They look at a different area of science. And so we've got several good ones and I, there's not one that I can pinpoint that's the best. But we will have an overall winner uh, this afternoon and that's going to be determined by our judges that we have on campus. The science fair allows students to be reviewed and kept in mind for later scholarships. The science fair has no best project, but the closest thing to that is the overall winner. Uh, the science fair process starts pretty early. Um, we start with uh, an experimental design, how to design and experiment and test different variables to see uh, you know, what data that can be collected from that, to see if there's any patterns within that data. Uh, they get to work on their communication skills because they have to go through the interview process. Uh, they get to work on collabor collaboration skills, working on putting the board together and presentation, putting the paper together. They get to work on scientific writing. Um, so overall, Science Fair is really, I mean, it's a science experiment, but it's really helping develop a lot of the soft skills that are necessary to be successful in the world we live in today. The entire gist of the science fair is to help develop the minor skills we need to be successful after high school, such as an understanding of certain topics that we most likely not think much about. This is Cole Howard from Airways Media. Here at AHS, our Quiz Bowl team has been doing very well in their competitions, but not everyone knows what Quiz Bowl is all about. Cole Howard and Hunter Brewer dove deeper into our Quiz Bowl team. 
The inquiry mod of the Ama High School quiz bowl team has been preparing hard for the upcoming tournament. The 9th grade quiz bowl team recently placed third in their tournament. Congratulations to all of them. We spoke to Mr. Edwards to get more information about the quiz bowl team. I feel really good. It's my first year doing anything quiz bowl and we had a great group of 9th graders that have really progressed. Um, this was a competition with like Fort Smith schools, Van Buren schools, and other Alma schools. So it's, it's a good accomplishment. This bowl is a game which two teams compete head to head to answer questions from all areas of knowledge, including history, literacy, science, fine arts, current events, popular culture, sports, and more. Quiz bowl is, is basically trivia, but it's not always like trivia that we think of, questions and dates you'll never have heard of. It can be like pop culture, musicals, sports, and even a little math, which makes it fun. We talked to multiple students in the quiz bowl about their experience with the team and in the tournament. Um, I feel that they've deserved it. I know those, well, I know them and I know that they've been working hard about it. I've seen how they work. I know a few of them because a lot of them are actually in band, but yes, they've worked hard for it, so I'm sure that they deserve it with every ounce that happens. Um, it was incredibly well for a team that um, is mostly made of new people, uh, people who haven't been in Quiz Bowl before this year. But, um, and you know, it is a bit disappointing that we did lose one match, but it, was a, it had a very good turnout and I'm very, very happy about it. Third, uh, I thought for our first tournament it was a really good show out for us. Uh, as a team, it was our first time traveling to a tournament. Uh, I thought we did very well, we beat some of the other teams. We only lost to the first place team and then we played for third, so I thought we did really well overall and I hope that next tournament we can probably place higher. It shows how our quiz bowl team can rise better and study more to improve on what we haven't whenever we went to the tournament. This is Hunter Cole and Hunter Brewer from Airways Media. History Day, like Science Fair, has been going on nationwide for a while now. Our competitors that are advancing are going off to regional and state level competitions. Evan Shibley dove deeper into History Day. History Day is a national event that allows students to be creative and create a presentation on a topic of their choice while fitting with the year's theme. A key aspect of History Day is the research that goes into a student's presentation, as this ensures a student's dedication to their project and History Day as a whole. Because the research is very important. You're not going to move on to regionals. You're not even going to go past the school. You're probably not even going to get a good grade if you don't have good, solid research. Many historical figures or events may overshadow others, but every year there will be an out-of-the-box choice. This shocks both the judges and contestants. But it's those people that go in on those minute, those niche details that do fit the theme. That's what interests me. Those kids who pick those are typically passionate about those, and so a lot of times those are some of our best projects because they... Congratulations to the students who made it through the school history day, and we wish them well in the next phase of the competition. This is Evan Shibley with Airwaves Media. Our news anchor, Michael Farrell, is down in the library to show us the free books that are being given away right now. Hey, today we're here in the library with a donation by the Hand to Hand Foundation to Alma School District. We have all these books here for you to come and pick out, just like Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and The Hunger Games Catching Fire. So if you want to, just anytime you want, just come down and grab some of these books and you can keep them for yourself. This has been Michael Farrell from Airways Media. Alma School District has big plans for our transportation department. Revolutionary new buses are coming, but what makes them so special? Destiny Wheeler finds out more. Loud noises, screaming children, messy bus floors, and burning rubber are all the many annoying things we experience on a daily basis when it comes to riding our school buses. Well, due to a $3 million grant from ADEQ, we will be getting eight new electric buses. But why? Here's Mr. Kirkendall here for more information. The grant to provide these electric buses for the, for the district is great. We're going to have to replace some of our outdated buses anyway. So this is just providing that money that there's no cost to us, $3 million worth, so that we can get some, some buses that uh, replace our aging fleet. So it's great for us, we're able to do it plus. It's, um, they're not 
They're not using fuel, they're electric, and they have air conditioning. What makes these new electric buses better than our older buses? Well, as the main bus manager of the bus garage, Jason Rutherford stated, these new buses will have updated safety standards, new cameras, new safety features, and best of all, air conditioning. These new buses will not have diesel engines, meaning that they'll be quieter with no emissions. But how will these buses benefit our school and community? It's, it's going to benefit us from a couple different perspectives. Number one is that we're getting new, we're getting new buses that we were going to have to spend our money on to replace. And the fact that um, with rising fuel prices, hopefully it will, it will save money in the future on the long run because of their electric. And the fact, again, um, having eight air-conditioned buses when it's during the hot months is going to be benefit our kids. What will happen to the older buses? Well, according to Mr. Rutherford, the older buses will be destroyed. I'm Destiny Wheeler from Airwaves Media. Our Alma High School... Th Thespian Troupe is off to sta State Thespian Festival, which is a celebration of theater and all the things that go along with it. Jace Coleman got the details on Thespian Festival. The theater class is doing many things this time of year, from preparing for their next show to planning for conventions and events they can go to. The Arkansas Thespian Festival uh, this weekend from Thursday to Saturday and this is a festival where students in theater from across the state come together and celebrate uh, theater and it's in a sense a competition. They participate in a number of different events um, so this is just an opportunity for them to come together and share uh, just a love that they that they have. The festival they are going to has many different events, ranging from dance to theater technology, and many, many more. So for the most part, our students are involved in the uh, performance pieces. So we have a group that is involved with the group musical, and we're taking Revolting Children from Matilda, so we'll be performing that again. But we also have a group scene, and we have a number of students that scored superior in what we call thespies, or their individual events, that will also be performing there. And then we also have our one act call, or titled Mere Mortals, that three of our uh, Thesp thespians will be performing while they're there at festival. I am Jace Coleman with Airwaves Media. Drug abuse is a very prominent issue in our country. There are many steps being put into place by many people to help these struggling people out. Connor Lyons and Joseph Lynn took a look into drug prevention. Drugs are a common problem found all across the U.S. and youth. The most common drug found in, the high, in school is nicotine as a vape or dipping pouches. Now, if you find yourself having problems with drugs, I think the best thing is to talk to an adult that you trust, first of all. That could be a teacher, that could be a parent, that obviously could be a school counselor, an administrator, um, somebody that can get you in contact with somewhere that can help you. There are treatment facilities or even just therapy that you can go to for addictions. Um, there is a national hotline from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration um, that, is, that you can call to get some information about resources and that number is 1-800-662-HELP. Um, and so there are, there are definitely things out there but I would say the first step would be to talk to somebody that you trust, an adult that you trust that can get you headed in the right direction for finding what you need. According to the National Center for Drug Abuse Statistics, youth drug abuse is a high public health concern with at least one in eight teenagers abusing and illicit substance in the last year. Um, I think that the best thing you can do to prevent drug use is um, you need to kind of look internally, do some introspection to figure out what is it that is causing you to want to take drugs. We as a school and a community, we need to work together to help students and even staff members who might have problems with drug use. This is Connor and Joey for Airwaves Media. There are a diverse variety of colleges in Arkansas from U of A to Arkansas Tech. These are great options to continue your education, but at what cost? Jim and I Shong took a deeper look into the cost of higher education in Arkansas. Did you know that there are over 40 colleges in the state of Arkansas? You might have heard of colleges like UFIS and ATU. They both have different varieties of majors to study. 
definitely apply for scholarships. Um, me personally, I've tried to stay away from loans just because like, I want to, stay, to be debt free when going to college and I've been very fortunate to do that, to stay debt free. So um, the, the biggest thing is to look for those scholarships, really seek out which ones apply to you, which ones you can use. So. Although there are many colleges to choose from, what can you do when it comes to the cost of education there? I've wondered how you can decide on the right college to attend to, or more importantly, the cost of education to get there. Be at school and do the best that you're in. Be, be, do the best that you can while you're here. Those two things will help you prepare you for college because it, it teaches you the skills you need to succeed in college. But the number three thing you need to do is when you become a freshman on this campus, you need to go visit with that counseling center and you need to start talking to them about your plans when you leave. And if you think, even if you're not positive, at least talk to them about what do I need to do if I decide to go to college? Because the sooner you can start down that path of preparing for it, the better off you're going to be. Even so if you're planning or thinking about applying to college, I recommend talking to your school counselor or anyone who can help you make your plan to get there and study your steps to college and find your ways to earn those scholarships. This is Gemini Shong from Airways Media. Many people say video games change people's mindsets, but do they really? Peyton Phillips and Abigail Spencer dive deeper into the subject. Video games are everywhere, from Candy Crush to Call of Duty. But can these games cause violent outbursts in impressionable teens? Some students say no, video games do not cause violence. One individual said video games can actually improve hand-eye coordination. Another student said that anything could be a bad influence. No, I don't really believe video games themselves promote violence. I believe it depends on the person and how they're feeling at the moment. Uh, in some circumstances, uh, I believe more so laziness than like actual violence. I mean, yeah, like some video games can like make you mad or something. But I feel like if you're getting to the point where a video game is affecting uh, your like mental state or how active you are, you shouldn't play that game. A study done by the American Psychology Association found that there is a link between violent video games and aggressive behavior. Studies are still being made on whether there's a strong connection between video games and violence or laziness. It is up to parents of students to decide and monitor their child's behavior. This is Bain C. Phillips from the Airedale. Spring sports are starting here at Alma, and soccer is one of those sports, but what is soccer all about? Aiden Mills and Declan Saunders have more on the soccer team. Even though soccer is the fourth popular sport in the U.S., a lot of high schools actually have soccer teams and kids can try out. Alma High School has a soccer team and is looking to win it all. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you've got 11 guys or 11 girls on the field, um, so you have to be able to move the ball together as a team. Um, and because of the width and the length of the field, like it really makes it, you know, you can't just dribble that like you can't just have one person dribble the ball all the way from end to end otherwise in an 80 minute game they're going to get really tired so it's very important that the team can work together and communicate and and pass and um, just really come out there and, and work as one cohesive group so team, uh, you can't do anything without teamwork in soccer 31 percent of americans call themselves soccer fans an all-time high uh, the biggest thing we're looking for this year is just improvement out of both groups. Uh, this will be year six of soccer, but if you take away the couple games we got the COVID year, it's really our fifth year of the program. Um, and so I, we've kind of been working on our 10-year uh, plan. So this is year five. I'd really like to see the, the groups excel a little bit more than what we have done. Uh, I've got high hopes for both groups. I think this will be one of the best boys groups our school has had since we've had soccer. Um, and I feel like our girls group is going to have the chance to be competitive too. This has been Declan Saunders and Aiden Mills with Airwave Media. Boy Scouts have been a popular organization to join for over a century. Evan Sanderson dives deeper into the subject. Boys BSA, also known as Boy Scouts of America, is an organization that helps the, Amer the Elma community by doing Eagle Scout projects throughout the area. One of the scouts is working on putting benches around the Elma Lake. We get to do all sorts of fun things. 
Um, we get to go scuba diving, rappelling. I really enjoy being in Boy Scouts since, like I said, we got to do a ton of fun things. Uh, this summer we get to go to Sea Base in Florida, which will be really cool. Boy Scouts do various activities like hiking and scuba. If you are first class and up, you can go on a high adventure base, such as the Florida Sea Base, Northern Tier High Adventure Base, and Philmont Scout Ranch. Going to Philmont Scout Ranch in New Mexico. I got to go on a backpacking trip for two weeks. The Boy Scouts have a ranking system starting at Scout, going up to Tenderfoot, then Second Class, to First Class, Star, and then Life, and ending it all off at Eagle. If you choose to continue, you can move up to Venture Scouts. Boy Scouts also teaches leadership roles. Boy Scouts is a organization for young men who like to do outdoors activities such as camping, hiking, swimming, and other things. Boy Scouts can also help with leadership roles. We have a senior patrol leader, assistant senior patrol leader, quartermaster, and leave no trace coordinator. If this sounds like a program you would be interested in, you should go check out the Boy Scouts of America. This is Evan Sanderson for Airwaves Media. As far back as 2020, the United States has considered banning TikTok, citing concerns over Americans' data being leaked to the Chinese government. Now, colleges in the U.S. are starting to ban the app for the same exact reason. Sarah Nutt took a deeper look into this topic. Social media has been around for quite a while now. The idea certainly isn't new, but what is relatively new is TikTok. Although it's been around for a few years, it's actually pretty new compared to other social media apps. Despite its popularity, TikTok is becoming a problem. So much so that at some universities, it's being banned from being used on campus at all. Um, there's a lot of concern about Chinese or China um, hacking into different systems, so I think that's overall the reason. Uh, but then the bottom line is safety and security of, of our kids and our information. It's not just being banned in universities either. A lot of states in the U.S. are banning TikTok too. Most states have it banned on state-issued devices, and they might be taking more extreme measures in the future. All government agencies um, in the state of Arkansas have now banned TikTok from any government agencies. So school districts are part of the government agency. No matter if you use the app or not, this is still a big change coming to colleges all over the country. I'm Sarah Nutt, and this is Airwaves Media. AI-created content is becoming the next hot topic on the internet, and AI art is just one of these newly generated content styles. But what is AI art all about? Ben Mitchell took a deeper look into AI art. Nowadays on social media, there's been a trend of art made by AI programs like Dolly, Starry, and Night Cafe. In fact, we even have some people at the school who do AI art themselves. Well, when I initially saw coverage about the AI art being publicly accessible, I thought, well, how can I use that in per my personal life, but then also like professionally? Um, so even for like our Instagram posts for the library, I've generated some different imagery involving Airedales and books and other things. And so um, the AI was able to create exactly what I had wanted it to. Um, and it's proven to be pretty cool. But what even is AI art? And how could you use something like that? Here's Miss Thixton to explain. Well, I've seen a lot of people using it to create what could be considered original content. Um, even on social media, people have created their own like web stories, comics um, within their own universes using AI art, um, generating it kind of in the same style. Um, I do think it raises some questions like, when are you infringing on somebody else's um, intellectual property? If AI art is taking that and recreating it, it's, there, there are some blurry, um, ethical considerations there, I think. But a lot of people are using it for all different types of things. What are some of the things that you should consider when using AI programs? 
I think these are amazing tools that can do some amazing things. I think, um, I know there's the chat GPT, which is the AI text generator, um, which again, raises some other types of concerns and considerations. What does that mean for classwork? What does that mean for um, authenticity in your own writing and your schoolwork? How do you know what's an original composition by somebody versus AI generated? Um, it's amazing stuff. It's also, you know, how far are we going to take it and what, what do we need to consider along the way as we dive into this different technology? This has been Benny J. Mitchell with Airwaves Media. Thanks for watching this episode of the Airedale. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure to follow all of our social medias at Airwaves Media. And as always, Go, Go Airedales! Airedales.